So, so today, as, as Vanessa noted, we'll be uh, providing an overview of CFD capability on the 3D Experience platform. We'll give a little bit of overview of some of the tools and capabilities. Um, and Michael will give an overview and a demo on how to use those capabilities to support product development. So as an agenda, we'll give a very brief overview of some of the products that Simulio offers, including Lattice Boltzmann and Navier Stokes Technologies and Products. We'll provide an overview, a more in-depth overview of the Navier Stokes Technology in particular, provide an overview of some of the business benefits that, the, that simulation in general and fluids in particular can provide in, in a product development scenario. We'll provide an overview of what the 3D experience the 3D experience platform is, and more importantly, provide a demo in terms of how to utilize it uh, to support product development. We'll provide an overview, as I noted, on automation and design space exploration for a specific A&D example, uh, as well as giving uh, an overview of a couple of additional um, examples. So Simulia products um, support a number of different industries, in, including transportation and mobility, aerospace and defense, marine and offshore, uh, industrial equipment, high tech, home and lifestyle, consumer packaging and goods, life sciences, energy and materials, construction cities and territories. Uh, in this webinar, we're going to give a detailed example of an aerospace and defense example, but also an additional example of how to use simulation, automa automation, and design space exploration for a uh, for life sciences example. So as I noted, Simulia provides uh, essentially two uh, solutions, Fluid Dynamics Engineer, which is a role on the 3D Experience platform based on the solution of the Navier-Stokes solutions. Uh, it allows a simulation of very complex geometry tied to native CAD, the meshing is essentially automated and embedded within the platform to support and facilitate uh, effective meshing as a, por as a part of um, a scenario build creation and simulation process. Simulia Pro provides two additional Simulia uh, 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 Lattice Boltzmann products, XFlow, which, which is a high-end simulation software that is uh, provides multi-phase and moving mesh capabilities to support applications such as uh, gear lubrication, tank filling, tank sloshing, uh, and a whole host of other scenarios where multi-phase and moving mesh is important. And then PowerFlow is a high-end Lattice Boltzmann solver that provides solutions for uh, aerodynamics application, thermal management application across multiple different, uh, multiple different industries. What I'd like to focus on now is the fluid dynamics engineering role, referred to as FMK, and Michael later in the presentation will give an overview and a description of what roles actually are. But in this case, the FMK role is based on a solution of the Navier-Stokes equations, uh, the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations in particular. It's CAD and PLM enabled, so strong connectivity to, to CAD embedded meshing within the scenario. Um, it allows for guided um, simulation setup as, as a part of a process for evaluating a series of different um, product development uh, uh, scenarios, if you will. It allows for automated flow volume extraction and provides unstructured meshing uh, capabilities with, with near wall prism layers to account for boundary, boundary layers. It's been heavily validated, a uh, very strong verification and validation effort has been undertaken to establish the credibility and the predictability of, of the solver for a number of different, different scenarios, and we will share some of that with you uh, later in the, in the presentation. It's highly automated, providing, again, connectivity to the CAD, uh, seamless meshing throughout the process, and connectivity to other tools, which will, again, be demonstrated in the demo that will be provided towards the latter end of, of, the, sem of the seminar. It allows for uh, multi-physics and multi-scale simulations, including FSI uh, and 1D system modeling. As I noted, the technology is built on the solution of the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations, uh, allows simulation for both laminar and turbulent flows in both the incompressible and compressible regimes, uh, allows users to simulate both non-Newtonian and Newtonian fluids, de depending on the physics required for the particular application. Uh, a fair degree of capability on heat transfer, a surface-to-surface -surface radiation model, uh, convective heat transfer, as well as conjugate heat transfer, simulating the solid 
in close connectivity to the fluid. There's additional physics capabilities in the solver, including but not limited to, limited to multating, multiple rotating frames, fans, volume of fluid for multi-phase applications, uh, human comfort model, multi-species tracking, and volumetric porous media. The algorithm that is used um, is, there are actually two different algorithms that the user can select depending on a specific application, a pressure-based segregated solver for both incompressible and compressible flows, as well as a density-based formulation for the solution of compressible flows with a preconditioner that enables efficient solution down, down to low Mach numbers. The solver is essentially second order in both space and time, and the linear solution of the implicit uh, solution is, is enabled by GM res for momentum, turbulence, and scalars by conjugate gradient stabilized method for energy and AMG for, for pressure for the segregated solver. Now, as I noted previously, a fair amount of work has been done to establish the predictive capability and credibility of the solver, uh, a large, uh, a very robust effort evaluating verification and validation has been done, um, including a transonic bump, and in this, in this case, evaluating three different meshing scenarios, a coarse, medium, and fine, evaluating and comparing against experimental data, um, as well as the Sabin diffuser, again, looking at a coarse, a medium, and a fine mesh, ensuring ability to achieve a grid-converged solution uh, for this particular ap application, as well as simulation past uh, a circular cylinder, looking at the uh, ability to predict um, the vortex shedding downstream of the circular cylinder for different scenarios, different time steps, and different uh, mesh resolutions. So these are very fundamental flows that are often evaluated as a part of uh, initial uh, product development for, for CFD, and Michael will share some more industrially relevant applications uh, later on in the presentation. Turbulence models include uh, the realizable K-Epsilon model, spillart Omaros model, and the K-Omega SST model. Uh, the solver supports um, a, a, a whole host of different uh, meshes including hexadominant, so hexahedral meshes, tetrahedral pyramids, and near-wall prismatic elements. The solver is, uh, is highly scalable, it's been de demonstrated to be effective up to hundreds of cores, and um, on the right-hand side I'm again showing just some of the verification and validation activities that have uh, been evaluated internally within Simulia for both turbulent channel here, uh, as well as a flat plate, and in this case we're looking at um, demonstrating that we recover the log law of the wall uh, for a, a turbulent boundary layer on different mesh resolutions for different turbulence models and different wall modeling techniques. So uh, FMK does allow for a Y plus insensitive solution depending on the near wall resolution, whether or not you're in the viscous sublayer, log layer, the, the, the turbulence model will adapt itself to provide a, a, a correct solution. So with that, we'll move on to the next part of this discussion, and Michael will provide a little bit more context prior to going through a demonstration on how to utilize FMK, uh, the Navier-Stokes solution on the platform, to support product development for a, a, a simplified scenario. Thank you, Greg. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Michael. So, hi everyone, my name is uh, Michael Sachs. I'm a fluids industry process expert in the Simulia organization. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining these, this e-seminar today on CFD for design on the 3D experience platform. What we would like to achieve with you today on the topic is the following. We want to provide you with an overview of fluid simulation on the platform to give a sense of, of the possibilities pertaining to product design, and we will do that going through a simple design process example. We want to demonstrate how the platform enables seamless integration of modeling and simulation technologies in an automated way to simplify and streamline design processes. And finally, we want to show how high-fidelity CFD solutions can be included in the design process to complement steady-state solutions and bring even more value to the product. To do that, let's first look at some industry challenges. Designing a product can entail encountering a number of challenges, no matter the complexity of the product or the target industry. Products need to be developed quickly with maximum confidence on performance, potentially across multiple disciplines. Going from an idea to a concept to a prototype can be a messy process 
And as the complexity of the system grows, it becomes more and more difficult to seamlessly articulate all the design phases and their respective activities. This is relevant for designing a completely new product or redesigning an existing one. Redesigning may be needed to conform to new regulations or extending product life expectancy. In this scenario, the part will go through the same steps multiple times, which will ultimately increase the time to market. As an example, redesigning an engine turbine blade in the event of a premature failure will require exchanges between the structural department, aerodynamics, thermal, integration, and production departments, all of which will take more or less time and effort to generate and transfer data to the next link which leads to decreased productivity. Constraints such as operational regulations can also lead to tighter margins on KPIs and an increased necessity for confidence in system performance. As the design process progresses, the cost of a design change increases, which means time to market, product relevance, and profitability are at risk. Being able to conduct performance trade-offs during the design process is extremely valuable as it can help maximizing the product's value early on and can reduce the risk of late stage failures. And as an example of this, in civil aviation, uh, there's a requirement for limits on perceived noise levels, but some of the noise comes from systems such as the engine or high lift devices, which have their own functional requirements. The question is, how do you reconcile each requirement with the necessary system performance? Developing a product can also entail dealing with a multitude of disciplines, multiple design teams, each one working with specific tools and processes. Extracting, analyzing, and communicating relevant data to stakeholders can become more and more difficult as the complexity of the system increases. To take the previous example, each team of designers and engineers in aerodynamics, thermal, structural, and manufacturing disciplines will generate a lot of data. Managing this data, converting it, storing it, sharing it and controlling access to it can become quite a challenge in large organizations with complex design processes. The 3D Experience platform addresses these challenges through roles which enable simulation as a means to understand and improve a product. Data management is greatly facilitated in this one environment as collaboration is its front and center. A digital twin, and particularly with physics simulation, can bring the much-needed answers on product viability, performance, robustness, and life expectancy. Simulation workflows developed by Simulia exist to enable OEMs to design efficient products on time and at minimal cost in a productive environment. Challenges of the product design include, but are not limited to, sets of uh, disconnected design tools, each one dealing with its own discipline or data format, uh, putting a product on the market also requires certification. Oftentimes, this means going through physical testing in a lab, which can be overloaded, stretching the OEM schedule and increasing the time to market. And initial designs are also rarely perfect, and iterations are usually needed to achieve a satisfying product, which echoes our previous point of uh, back and forth between teams. Overall, there are a number of challenges that designers can encounter. And what Diaz can bring to this to product designers is a set of tools that allow to design products with increased productivity, delivering more innovative products at lower costs and shorter time to markets. To achieve this, we carry a, a set of value enablers. We aim at simplifying how design is done. We allow broader design space explorations to explore all poss possibilities and move confidently to subsequent design steps. And by nature, the platform makes data available to all stakeholders to improve how they collaborate and communicate throughout the design process. Simulation allows us to understand virtually the physical behavior of a product faster and more in-depth than traditional prototyping with physical testing. With simulation, designers are not constrained by the same logistics, planning, investments, and they're not limited by the same tools used to measure physical phenomena. This means that simulation allows for a more in-depth understanding of a product in a shorter time frame while minimizing development costs. We've just seen how simulation can add value to the design process, but we can go even further by considering multi-physics simulations, uh, automated processes and design explorations involving CFD. With automation, designers can get more value out of their simulations with a similar level of effort. And automation eliminates repetitive tasks that have no added value, but it also enables the democratization of fluid simulation by simplifying the workflow 
of design, meshing, simulation, and post-processing. It's critical to be able to characterize a product's behavior early on, and it is very valuable to gain insights into design variants, explore different options, and quantify uncertainties to make a well-informed decision by considering all aspects of the product. Using simulation in such a way allows to seamlessly generate all the data that is needed to maximize the product's value and meet or exceed requirements to bring innovative solutions on the market faster and with confidence. Ultimately, this leads to bringing innovative products on the market in shorter time frames. Let's now review some examples of workflows offered by Simulia before we get into the demonstration. Simulia's portfolio addresses different optimization workflows. Depending on the application, the objectives, and the available data, designers might find one is more relevant than the other. There's the example of parametric generative design optimization, which is enabled by the modeling, the automation of the modeling and simulation approach, which is addressed by the MDO, the MDO role. Uh, it allows to directly link design data to product performance through the digital thread. An example of this would be quantifying aerodynamic loads on a wing across different operating conditions or design specifications. It's ideal for products designed on the platform because of the integration with Katia and Sumulia apps. Non-parametric topology optimization is also a solution offered within uh, on the platform. It's ideal for internal flows. It benefits from a simple linear workflow of modeling, simulation, and extraction of a new optimized shape. An example would be reducing pressure losses inside piping components, which tends to eliminate flow recirculations, yield a shape that follows more closely the bulk of the internal flow. In this scenario, a designer can quickly move from a simple design, a simple but functional design, to an optimal shape usable in CATIA for the rest of the development process. We also have parametric mesh morphing with PowerFlow and Design Guide. This is ideal for exploring product performance on a legacy model for which initial design parameters are not necessarily known. It allows to yield insight into performance variation with design changes can be very relevant to the work of a car designer, where style is a priority, but drag and fuel consumption must comply with certification and customer requirements. It is possible with this tool to guide the styling of the car with quantifiable performance trends and find a compromise between performance and visual appeal. These workflows enable a deeper understanding of product performance through the use of simulation. We'll spend a majority on parametric design, but highlight some other examples. Let's link back what we've just discussed to the previously stated objectives. We're going to show you a parametric design process demo, taking advantage of the digital thread on the 3D Experience platform to perform a multi-physics simulation process of a simple parametric wing as a precursor to multidisciplinary optimization. Let's look at how the platform offering is structured and how it enables us to perform such design processes. The 3D Experience platform is a collaborative environment where project planners, engineers, marketing specialists, analysts all come together to work on the same source of truth. This one environment provides connectivity between the steps of product design, bringing modeling and simulation together to design and perfect innovative products. The licensing model follows the concept of roles and apps. Each role addresses the needs pertaining to a design workflow and each role gives access to certain applications or apps, each one addressing the main steps of a workflow. Let's look at some roles that are relevant to the rest of this presentation. Some of the roles that one can find on the platform are uh, MES, FMK, DRD, and MDO. So MES stands for Mechanical and Shape Designer. It's a CATIA role giving access to apps needed to create complete geometries, including surface modeling, and assembly of parts into complete products. The corresponding apps benefit from integration in PLM and the rest of CATIA roles. Resulting geometries can also be managed and automated with knowledgeware components, helping with managing product concepts or parameterized models. The FNK role, as Greg presented, is Simulia's RENT CFD solution, uh, which allows designers to benefit from a guided workflow throughout the setup of a simulation using uh, an assistant panel, which makes for a very friendly user experience. 
The workflow includes automated meshing of the fluid domain, which reduces the proportion of geometry preparation, a step that has virtually no added value. And users also benefit from the integration of FMK apps to CAD and PLM on the platform. The Structural Professional Engineer role, DRD, uses Abacus Solver on the platform to solve complex structural scenarios, including thermal, modeling, and acoustic propagation, and can be used in conjunction with all the other roles. MDO, Multidisciplinary Optimization Engineer, allows a user to create and execute simulation processes, to generate and analyze large data sets, and guide or even optimize product specifications relative to physical requirements. Overall, it helps minimize the risk of failure and deliver efficient products. These roles are only a subset of what is available on the platform, but a lot can already be achieved with them. We'll now review some examples of what the FMK role can, can bring. Earlier in the presentation, Greg presented some fundamental validation cases. Here's a more industrially relevant example to gain confidence in FMK for external aerodynamics and optimization of a wing, which we will demonstrate shortly. Onera M6 is a classic validation case for transonic flow solvers and pressure data is available at different spanwise location from the experiment. In the current flow conditions, the wing surface shows two shocks which interact close to the wingtip and this behavior is fairly well captured by the steady RAND solution. It is worth noting that the mesh resolution study could be conducted to better capture the two distinct shocks at 80% of span, but that will be for a, a next webinar. Another validation case published by NASA is the supercritical airfoil RAE2822. This is a 2D simulation of a transonic turbulent flow, again comparing FMK to experiment and WinCFD results. WinCFD is a code, is an obvious Stokes solver code developed by NASA, which can model turbulent flows with one or two equation turbulence models, algebraic models, or Rance LES hybrid models. Here we compare simulation results obtained with FMK to the ones of wind using the one equation spalart Mars model. Mach number contours show an aerodynamic shock on the suction side of the airfoil at around 52% of cord, followed by a shock-induced flow separation. The distribution, the pressure distribution along the cord shows a slight pressure peak near the leading edge, which is well captured, followed by a gradual increase until the shock occurs. In the demo we're going to show you, we're going to use the high-fidelity CFD software PowerFlow as a verification tool. So let's look at validation examples of PowerFlow. PowerFlow is a well-established CFD solution which has been extensively used in the TNM industry for vehicle aerodynamics, body soiling, and wind noise. More recently, PowerFlow has been gaining market shares in the A&D industry, and work has been published on high-lift aerodynamics, including on the DAXA standard model, which you see here on the top right corner of the slide. Here we look at a transonic turbulent flow over a complex geometry which includes slats, flaps, and engine nacelle and pylons. A range of angle of attack was simulated, and we can see a very good agreement of the lift polar, but also of the CL max and stall angle. The reason for this is PowerFlow is capable of accurately predicting the flow separation mechanisms, spe specifically at the inboard and outboard uh, locations circled in red, as well as the influence of high lift devices and engine mounts seen on the, the uh, oil flow visualization at the bottom right. Now that we've covered the fluid simulation solutions, we'll go into the details of a parametric design process example. One of the keys to enabling design exploration and optimization is data management. Many open source and commercial tools exist to address each step of the design process, whether it's 3D modeling, simulation, post-processing, or data analysis and optimization. Being able to articulate all these steps in a seamless manner is the enabler of such workflows and a huge step forward compared to current industry practices and software from our competitors. The digital thread allows to create flexible workflows where designers and engineers can seamlessly add value to the product as it is being developed and guide the design with quantitative data. This example workflow takes advantage of CATIA and similar roles to perform the different steps from design to validation. The roles used are mechanical and shape designer, 
fluid dynamics engineer, multidisciplinary optimization engineer, and the high fidelity CFD software PowerFlow. So for example, for the design step, uh, you would start with uh, 2D sketches or drawing complex surfaces, parameterizing dimensions. The model build step uh, is there to simplify the CAD model if needed, removing holes, removing small features that are out of scope of the study. Uh, that is where uh, users define material properties for fluids, solids, uh, assigning them to specific parts, and finally mesh the, the domain. In the scenario step, we configure the physics to be simulated, uh, whether it's fluid flow or uh, fluid flow including conjugate heat transfer with lingering solids. We configure compressibility, turbulence, uh, steadiness uh, of the simulation, or if it's a transient one. Um, that's where users would set boundary conditions, uh, configure the outputs of a simulation, and finally execute the simulation. At the results step, we're able to visualize flow fields, surface distributions, use sensors to measure aerodynamic forces, and generate lightweight visualization data called experience content to share on platform communities, for example. Automation is an important part of this process. Uh, you would define a process by simply dragging and dropping in the viewer of the, the appropriate app using adapters for design exploration, whether it's a design of experiment or a Monte Carlo um, exploration, um, or uh, use adapters for direct optimization as well. Analysis and optimization uh, is uh, really easy on the platform. You can seamlessly load data generated by simulation processes, set objectives for response variables, target values, or minimization and maximization objectives, uh, visually and quantitatively compare design alternatives and rank them, and finally make a collaborative, well-informed decision on the design. The high fidelity CFD verification step is very important. It allows us to confirm results and conduct more advanced studies such as noise computation, for example, if, if uh, applicable. Now, although this is not how one would typically design a wing, this process shows how designers can take advantage of the connectivity of the platform to go from a parameterized design all the way to a design that meets their requirements in one digital thread. So as an example of parametric design, we'll show you a video in a few moments of this process dealing with a simple three-dimensional wing based on a NACA four-digit profile. We'll look at a parameterized wing with the MES role. We'll go through the steps of setting up the fluid model and the simulation scenario with the FNK role, which we will use to execute and monitor the simulation. After that, we will use the MDO role to set up and execute an automated simulation process with a design of experiment to simulate efficiently the design space and we'll then move on to the simulating the mechanical stresses on an improved design with the DRD role. Let us move on to the video on the next slide. First, we start by opening a product and updating some design parameters. We can change the maximum camber, maximum camber location, the wing sweep or twist angle and see how the geometry changes in front of us as we click on the update button. It is worth pointing out that the meshes associated to the geometry can be updated in the exact same way. To create a fluid model from scratch, we open the fluid model creation app from the compass. This app allows to create the different fluid domains, interfaces, and properties, and associate materials. In this case, the domain is a simple bounding box around the wing, and we set air as the only material for the fluid domain. Once the model is created, we are ready to open the Fluid Scenario Creation app to set up the simulation we wish to solve. In this interface, users can follow the assistant on the right-hand side to step-by-step -step set up the physics behavior, turbulence model, solver, and monitoring settings.
we also set the boundary conditions. Here we use a velocity inlet and pressure outlet conditions along with a symmetry plane. Once the scenario is set up, execution is launched in the same interface and monitored quantities appear in a pop-up window. When the simulation finishes, its results can be displayed in the Physics Results Explorer app, where we visualize the flow field, surface distributions. We can also measure forces and create parameters to manage the desired outputs. Once we have gone through the process once from design to results generation, we can automate it. We open the Process Composer app from the compass and drag and drop the required building blocks from the toolbar onto the process diagram. Here we only need a DOE adapter to guide the execution of the process and a physics simulation adapter to execute the previously defined simulation. Inside the physics simulation adapter, we set the input and output variables to expose at the process level, and they will appear in the DOE adapter to use as design or response variables. In this case, we will run a series of simulations determined with a Latin hypercube DOE using as inputs aspect ratio, taper ratio, thickness to cord ratio at the tip, wing twist angle, wing area, and profile parameters of maximum camber, maximum camber location, and maximum thickness. We define the response variables to be aerodynamic forces and coefficients, simulation and mesh metrics, and convergence criteria. We execute the process, and once it's done, we can load the data into results analytics to analyze the design space. In results analytics, users go through a sequential process of previewing the inputs and outputs, defining the objectives or target values for each response variable. Computed designs can be displayed in a table view and ranked in relation to design objectives. Another option is to use scatter plots to quickly visualize the response over the design space and extract a Pareto front. Users benefit from the basket feature, allowing to quickly select favorite design alternatives for further processing. The selected alternatives can then be compared in more detail and in a collaborative fashion with comments and likes to eventually determine a better design alternative. High-fidelity CFD solutions can be used to complement the steady RAND solutions. To get a closer look at high-frequency transient effects and simulate to the smallest geometrical detail. In this case, we can compare pressure distribution at different spanwise sections and see a good agreement between RANDs and average VLES results from PowerFlow. Once we're done with fluid simulations, we can create a structural model of the wing geometry and its internal structure and simulate the mechanical stresses. Using the Structural Scenario Creation app, following a similar process as the fluid scenario earlier, we can set the analysis to be conducted. In this case, we apply a pressure load on the wing surface by mapping the pressure distribution extracted from FMK without leaving the platform environment. We run the simulation in the same app, and once it's done, we can use the same Physics Results Explorer app to visualize stresses, strain, displacement, yielding, and extract characteristic values with sensors. So the process we just showed is a very simplified version of what can be achieved with the different roles. In this process, we have the goal of providing the necessary lift to a vehicle and creating a structure that can sustain the corresponding loads. We use FMK and MDO to extract integral forces for all the designs and find an alternative that satisfies lift requirements while minimizing drag. We then can confirm our CFD results with high fidelity solutions like PowerFlow and finally use the DRD role to verify the structural integrity of the wing and its internal structure. It is important to note that this process can be refined 
For example, the initial airfoil profile could have been determined through a legacy model external to the platform, but included in the automated simulation process through the appropriate adapters. The design exploration was conducted only on the fluid simulation, but it could have also included both CFD and FEA in the loop. And the structural model could have included a more detailed system representation, such as uh, control surfaces, actuators, fuel tanks, rivets, to have a more precise representation of the system, but also to factor in uh, mass and range, for example. So that was an example of uh, parametric design. Now let's move on to a, an example of non-parametric design. At the beginning of the year, medical ventilators became a precious resource and flow splitters were shown to be a valuable device in the life sciences industry. Flow splitters can constitute a solution for supplying multiple patients with the necessary airflow from only one ventilator unit. They allow to multiply a ventilator capacity and thus serve more patients. The presented flow splitter aims at providing adequate airflow to up to four patients. It needs to satisfy physiological needs while minimizing energy losses in the flow. So on the geometry you see at the bottom right of this, uh, the flow inlet is at the bottom and four flow outlets are on the top. Using CATIA part design, a designer can create an initial proposal based on existing concepts and available knowledge. This design may satisfy functional requirements, but it might not be the best alternative. Using the GDF role, which is a role from CATIA that uses the flow solver of FMK in Simulia, a designer can design a part from its intended purpose or functionality and build a geometry accordingly from a simplified design space, thereby fulfilling functional needs while guaranteeing an efficient solution for the product in a simple linear workflow. Another approach to design exploration is through surface deformation or morphing. One of the new features of PowerFlow 2020 is Design Guide, which augments the typical PowerFlow workflow with the ability to create parameterized surface deformations and simulation variables in a component referred to as a design study. A design study allows to automate the generation of the geometry and the subsequent simulation setups. Using a Latin Hypercube DOE, a li list of design points is automatically set up, executed, and post-processed. A response surface model is created on the generated data set and can then be queried at design points that have not yet, yet been evaluated with a CFD simulation inside the Power Insight GUI, which is the post-processing tool of the PowerFlow suite. In the current scenario, we look at a Delta Wing aircraft configuration starting from an initial model on which are defined four variables, uh, leading edge group, which deforms the leading edge uh, downward, similar to the high lift uh, the system of the Concorde B. We have the wing dihedral, wing twisting factor, and a wing tip deflection. Surface morphing is achieved by creating lattices around the target surfaces and deforming these lattices. There by deforming the surfaces contained in them. The image of step number two shows the lattices associated with the wing dihedral and the leading edge droop deflection. Simulia Cloud now includes an automated process to seamlessly compute the design space and extract the predefined response variables. So uh, this process can be performed in a very automated manner. The generated data can then be loaded into Power Insight to display a color map and generate a Pareto front pertaining to design objectives. The color map indicates where to deform the geometry and by how much in order to improve the performance relative to an objective. The indicated deformations are based on relative objective sensitivities with respect to the design variables over the whole design space, which provides a design direction with the most performance improvement or the least amount of design change. The color map provides design guidance based on the DOE and RSM results, but in a way that can be intuitively understood by engineers as well as designers, enabling an improved collaboration between the two teams. 
we will now show this example through a video of the Power Insight interface. Here, a single set of flow conditions was considered, but you could also carry out design studies using flow conditions as design variables and make trade-off decisions based on performance at particular operating conditions. By interacting with the individual design features, an engineer or designer can see the impact on the performance of those changes. In this example, the change in lift or drag can easily be understood for each feature allowing the user to better understand the design space and which parameters are having the most effect on the response. As we've been seeing, this feedback is given in real time, so there is no delay between changing a parameter value and seeing the associated geometry change and response change. In this example, the lift and drag coefficient, as well as lift to drag ratio, are charted in the Pareto front graphs on the right-hand side. By switching to guide mode, we get design guidance for how to improve the performance of the aircraft. By analyzing the Pareto front graph, a user can do in-depth analysis of the performance metrics and the trade-offs between the different objectives. The design guide color map provides feedback on the geometry on how to move the design towards the optimal for the selected objective. With Design Guide, all the simulation post-processing features found in Power Insight are still available. This allows users to look into detail on important aspects of the results, such as local flow behavior and compare results between any of the existing simulations. This often provides even more insight into the design as users can understand not only what happens within the design space, but also why. For instance, a user can plot and view the pressure coefficient at different sections along the wing. They can also look at other integrated quantities and compare them across the different runs of the design space. All of the results and information for each simulated run of the design space is e easily accessible. All of this, as well as more capabilities, can now be experienced with Design Guide, which is available within the PowerFlow 2020 product suite. So this concludes my presentation. So now we arrive at the key takeaway slide. What is really important uh, to take away from this session is that the 3D Experience platform roles really enable the seamless articulation of all the design phases across disciplines following the digital thread. Simulia's fluid solutions include FMK, XFlow, and PowerFlow, which address all stages of product design. Automation of CFD simulations on the platform enables value for product development in a seamless manner and in a way that is accessible to non-experts. Leveraging design exploration and optimization solutions on the platform also enables a complete understanding of the product and guides designers to maximize its performance before even building a physical prototype.